best, but you don't succeed. When you get what you want, but not what you need. When you feel so tired, but you can't sleep. Stuck in reverse. When the tears come streaming down your face When you lose something you can't replace When you love someone but it goes to waste Could it be worse? Lights will guide you home and ignite your bones, and I will try to fix you. May God be with you. 
Good morning and welcome to worship at Mount Olivet Lutheran Church of Plymouth. Welcome to those of you who are gathered here in our parking lot and welcome to those of you who are gathered in your homes or your cabins or your cars even, um, uh, listening to us online and over the phone. We are one church in many places and that's okay. And for those of you who are here in person, um, I'm trying to figure out who you are because you're distant and you're also wearing masks and sunglasses and hats. Um, but I am so glad to see you. Um, if you are here in person, uh, we're gonna let the, the band do all of the singing today, but you can do uh, the speaking as it is appropriate. Um, if you're here in person uh, and haven't done so already, send one person up uh, to gather communion at one of these tables around. You might wanna wait until other people uh, are, are clear of that space. Uh, J means juice, W means wine, all of the crackers are gluten-free. If you're here in, uh, in person, you are welcome, welcome, encouraged even to use your phones during worship. Since during passing of the peace, we'll ask you to stay in your own area and during prayers of the people, we will be taking comments on our Facebook Live video rather than me traveling around to hear your prayers. I think that's it. Um, we can all pray for more sun. Um, and we can also start worship uh, with a word of confession, centering ourselves in those things that we want to let go of and the thing that we need to receive, which is given so freely to us, God's mercy um, given to all. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together in Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The band now leads us in song. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow. are sure I will trust in you alone higher than my sight high above my life I will trust in you
light into the world, light into my life. I will live for you alone. You're the one I seek, knowing I will find all I need. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let's pray together. God of the road, we pray for people who will reveal your love to us as we forge ahead in these unchartered days. Help us trust in how your story continues to be written through community. In Jesus' name, amen. Book of Ruth, chapter 1, verses 1 through 22. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem and Judah went to live in the country of Moab, he and his wife and two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife Naomi, and the names of his two sons were Malon and Shilion. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem and Judah. They went into the country of Moab and remained there. But Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died, and she was left with her two sons. They took Moabite wives. The name of the one was Orpah, and the name of the other, Ruth. When they had lived there about 10 years, both Malon and Chilion also died, so that the woman was left without her two sons and her husband. Then she started to return with her daughters-in-law from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had considered his people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she had been living, she and her two daughters-in-law, and they went on their way to go back to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you, as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find security, each of you in the house of your husband. Then she kissed them, and they wept aloud. They said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. Pardon me. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? 
Do I still have sons in my womb that may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. Even if I thought there was hope for me, even if I should have a husband tonight and bear sons, would you then wait until they were grown? Would you then refrain from marrying? No, my daughters. It has been far more bitter for me than for you because the hand of the Lord has turned against me. Then they wept aloud. Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. So she said, See, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Do not press me to leave you or to turn back from following you. Where I go, pardon me, where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. There will I be buried. May the Lord do thus and so to me and more as well, if, if even death parts me from you. When Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more to her. So the two of them went on until they came to Bethlehem. When they came to Bethlehem, the whole town was stirred because of them. And the women said, Is this Naomi? She said to them, Call me no longer Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt bitterly with me. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi when the Lord has dealt harshly with me and the Almighty has brought calamity upon me? So Naomi returned together with Ruth the Moabite, her daughter-in-law, who came back with her to the country of Moab, from the country of Moab. They came to Bethlehem at the beginning of the barley harvest. The word of our Lord. Al, you crushed those names today. Way to go. And that is, not that's not a short reading. Nice work. Okay, I know there's a little bit of a delay in the live stream, so um, you always have permission now in church to use your phones, but I'm gonna ask you to pull them out because I have a question for you. And typically, I would just look out to the pews and you would respond, but um, a little bit different today, so please use your phones when we get to that point. This story is from the book of Ruth. But I'm wondering if it also could be called the book of Naomi. The two women have shifting roles as the main characters over the course of the entire story. And I felt this connection with Naomi because I think it's difficult not to see ourselves in her eyes these days. She has had it with God and with life and does not mince words in speaking this. She's rightfully sulky, honestly lamenting the loss of her family, her husband, and two sons. This family she has known and loved, and now there is no future ahead for her, no story yet to be written. She's forced to find another place to go because of a famine, and as a widow, the odds of her existence are nil in a foreign land. Yet even her homeland feels new and unchartered after being away for so long. She even begs God for a new name. From Naomi, which means sweet, to Mara, which means bitter in Hebrew, because this is how she feels a desire to rename even her identity because of her suffering and despair. Now, interestingly, God does not come to Naomi in a dream with this gentle assurance that she will only be given what she can handle or that all of this is happening for a reason. God is silent in this story. Rather, the voice of unexpected love, presence, and hope comes from one of her daughters-in-law, Ruth, who is a Moabite, 
who has grown up not knowing God, says to Naomi, you will not go alone to this new place. I will go with you. We will experience this together. Now the chances of abundant life would have been greater for Ruth if she would have hugged her mother-in-law goodbye and settled back to find a way ahead in her home country. Yet something pulls her to stay, to accompany even when she could not see what the future would hold. Ruth communicates her presence and she refuses to leave. Now let's imagine for a moment, it's not a journey from Moab to Bethlehem, but instead the journey is the situations in our lives where we must leave the place we are and go to a place that is unknown, where life as we know it will be different. So here's where you pull out your phones. Comment right now to what comes to mind when you think about those situations in life where you have to go from a place that you have known now to a place that's different. I'm gonna read what you write as I share a few examples that I thought after talking and being with you over this last summer. Moving a spouse, a parent, or maybe even yourself from independent living now to memory care or assisted living. Starting a new high school without your trusted friends. Lingering between jobs or in a job that does not tap into your gifts. Navigating life now as a widow or a widower. When you realize how restless your heart is and you're called to speak into all the inequity that's happening in the world, and then you notice how your beliefs do not match your family and your friends. The day before cancer treatment begins, deciding to become foster parents, trepidation, fearful and alone, going off to college, leaving for the first time, you're telling me, teaching students in a classroom to teaching students online from home, floating. How will we ever know when we've arrived? Did you notice that even in these first verses of this story, the shared weeping the heaviness of these transitions in life. These are gutsy moves. We leave something behind as we go to the next place. We feel ill-equipped for what is ahead and God doesn't seem to swoop in with a playbook for how to even take the next step. But it is not God who miraculously appears, but Ruth someone who entered Naomi's story midlife, someone who is probably more different than the same. She's an outsider with a heart, though, to see beyond expected boundaries or limits. Ruth commits herself to Naomi's care while also trusting in the care she will receive as she accompanies her to this new place. And knowing or not, she trusts that this loving presence that walks alongside is strong enough to rewrite a story with a supposed bitter ending, step by weary step. I'm not sure today if you are Naomi, making your way now into a new place or role, or if you are Ruth, called to accompany someone and where they are going. Throughout the story, both women illuminate how the beautiful dance between giving care and receiving care and how much we need each other along the way. 
Ultimately, as we know now, the book was named after Ruth. She is one of the very few women named in the genealogy of Jesus. As the story progresses, Ruth marries Boaz in Bethlehem and they bear a son named Obed, who will become the grandfather to King David. Ruth, the foreigner, who decided to accompany her mother-in-law to a place in a future to which they could not see the ending by paths as yet untrodden through perils unknown. A woman who did not leave reveals the power of human presence. And this is a part of the story of Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, God with us. Joel and I typed an email this last week and we sent it to all of you on Thursday in the e-alert. And we were really honest with you. We cannot make church like we have always known it to be the same this fall. We were all hoping that we could be more in person, that we could open the front doors to worship every week in the sanctuary. But truth be told, and you have told us, you're not ready for it, and we don't have the staff capacity to keep people in person safe and also be able to navigate and lead worship online. All the ways that you have experienced God and you connect with each other have shifted and you are forced and we are forced to do things in new ways. It's getting really tiring. I'm tired of it. We want the old way back and our feelings like Naomi are of impatience and bitterness. And there's a tendency to find other ways to fill these empty spaces. But sometimes you don't have the privilege to make a change. Sometimes you have to walk the robe from Moab to Bethlehem, not knowing how it's gonna go. But what does it look like to stay and trust and to notice the people around you who are called to stay as well? We started some new prayer opportunities and learning opportunities this week and more will be getting in the weeks to come. And I noticed as we popped into these Zoom calls, there is some trepidation but also awe to see that another person showed up for this too, that there was other people on the same road together, seeking a place to connect these days, seeking to experience God in the midst of it all. It matters that you are here. It matters that we are a church community who commits to creating this belonging church in a time when it's so much harder to do just that. God may feel silent to you these days. Does God care that all is messed up and the angst that we feel traveling this uncertain ro road? Yet maybe God is already here showing up in you or in someone in your life now, or maybe called to meet with you or accompany you to this place that you did not expect to travel to. Maybe you haven't even met them yet. I don't think we can expect for God to show up in the ways that we always hope God will show up. So today, Think about this. Who's the Ruth in your life? Thank God for her. Where are you called to let someone know that you are with them? Trust that gut feeling, it's a call. I've come to the point in my life where my kids know more things than I do. And I was talking about emojis with my daughter, Caroline, and she told me that the prayer emoji can also be used as a high five emoji. 
So that's what we do as an expression of hello, but also that expression of, hey, I'm there for you. We don't go this way on our own. We connect hands in mutual sharing. The divine will be revealed in human hearts, in human hands, and in human bodies. Our presence is with each other, and it's also our ongoing connection and prayer to God. You know what? We're gonna need each other as we navigate ahead. So show up as you have been doing and reach out to let someone know that you are with them. And then look around in your life and notice who's with you. Amen. cannot hide this longing that grows in this temple of silence and stars. But a thief in the night, stolen and broke every chain that it bound up my heart. I cannot cling to shadows again so here on this altar tonight I lay every dream I've ever dreamt to burn in the fire God lights I cry the name of the one who loves me the name of the
loves me The name of the one on whom I call Till it roars like thunder rolling Down these canyon walls I cry the name of the one who loves me The name of the one on whom I call Till it roars like thunder rolling Down these Down Together we confess our faith, a faith in a God who walks with us using these old words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Each week we tell a story um, to help everyone feel more connected at church, especially in these times when we are in many places. It's important to know that God is still moving through us and moving through us together. And we just wanted to give you an update about baptisms, um, which have not stopped. We took a pause right at the beginning, figured out how to do it safely, and we've been baptizing um, babies and youth and adults during this time, including young Ian, who I see back there. Um, and you, if you've been tuning into worship regularly, know that we believe uh, baptism is not just about the person being baptized. It's about the whole community of faith, the whole family of God that they uh, become part of. So we videotape them and then show them there. But for, for the person being baptized, we also give them a sign that all of you are thinking of and praying for them and that all of you know that we are in community together. And that's these tied felt blankets um, that, that we make uh, given freely to each person baptized. And we had some families right when COVID uh, hit that said, hey, we're gonna go stir crazy at home. Can we make these? Can we make these at our house over the summer? And so Erica Nolte hooked them up and they've been doing family crafts and um, give, making the blankets that we need um, so that uh, these babies and their families know that they are not alone. Um, we have baptisms this afternoon, actually. And we also have, um, Erica is going to be out front with uh, Bible Explorer kits, take-home kits, and she also has felt or uh, material for, for these blankets. If you and your family want to join in this ministry, if you could use a take-home craft, um, Erica is happy, happy to um, hook you up with that. 31 baptisms this past year, and if you yourself are not baptized or know someone who would like to be baptized, this is inclusive waters. These waters are open for everyone, and we encourage you and your family to open up a conversation with me and Pastor Beth, and we would love um, to share in that with you, and you get a blanket too. <laughs> 
All right, we now um, do three things at once. We listen to the band offer their music. We offer our gifts, our financial gifts, and um, we know that you all give in many ways, and we appreciate it. We don't have any other funding sources but you, and so however you are able to give, um, please do so. Um, if you're here in person, the best way to do that is either by text or um, mopley.org slash giving. And uh, we also share the piece. If you're online, you can go ahead and type peace be with you in the comments and like other people's comments. If you're here in person, you can do that too. You can hug the people you came with. You can um, maybe do a prayer emoji to the people that you didn't come with or a peace sign or a, a friendly wave. Um, a sign that God is with us and that we are the ones that God is using to be made known through in the world. The peace of God be with you all. Let's share peace. When I waited so long, when my tears were my song, with my hope nearly gone, you held me, God, to believe in the face of the dry, weary place, when you fell.
If you have not gathered um, elements for communion, this is what we are uh, celebrating. So you might want to send one person up to uh, gather the little um, goblets, and I'll explain in a little bit how to use them. Communion is the feast that makes us one. In it, we are united with God and with all our family in Christ. Those here, those gathered at home, and people who share this meal all across the world. God's table is wide enough for all. And so no matter who you are, you are welcome here. There is a place at this table for you. If you're here in the parking lot at church, we will con commune using individual containers. W means wine, J means juice. All the crackers are gluten-free. Be sure to open the cracker side first. Um, and um, I'll let you know uh, at the very end, uh, that's when you take communion. Um, my invitation will, will be all you need. You don't need to say the body of Christ to one another. And if you're at home, you are welcome to use whatever you have gathered because we trust and we know a God who uses ordinary things to bring us extraordinary grace. If you're not taking communion today, you are no less a part of God's family or our church community, and we will offer you a blessing. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. United as one, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. If you're not receiving communion today, receive this blessing. God bless you, strengthen you, and make you whole. And if you are sharing in communion, whether here or at home, this is the good news. The body of Christ is given for you. The blood of Christ is shed for you. Let us eat and drink together now in thanksgiving because God comes to us by grace. Amen.
May the presence of Jesus strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Each week before we are sent into this world, into the rhythms of our daily lives, into a world in which much is unknown, we draw close to one another and close to God as we pray. And we don't know, we don't always know how God answers prayer, but sometimes it's enough to know that we are not alone in our prayer. And so if you have something to offer, if you do not want to be alone in your prayer, you may do so. And the way that we're asking you to do this is to type it in the comments of our Facebook Live. Um, you know that there's a delay, so you can start typing it now. Um, and by the time I am, uh, I am ready to receive them, they will be there. Um, and if you do not have a phone with you today, if you do not have a way to um, do this live, we have a prayer team at Mount Olivet that um, takes their work very seriously. And um, you can either go to mopley.org slash pray, or if you're more of a pen and paper kind of person, you can go around to door A or door one at, at our church and there's a box there where you can submit prayer requests. There's a space there where you can sit um, and, and be still um, on our grounds. So let's pray. I'll begin, and then I will take your prayers. God, um, thank you so much for this day. Thank you so much for uh, this church and for each person who makes it up. Thank you for the ways that um, you call us um, to be Ruths to one another and that you send us Ruths in our lives. God, help us to make our way together. Help us open our minds to see you in new places, to follow you into um, places that we do not yet know, patterns that um, are unfamiliar, places that are unseen. God, we thank you um, because we know that you will be with us and that you will be with us most especially with our neighbors and through our neighbors. God, in your mercy. Um, I would like to pray a prayer first of all. Um, this is from the Finley family. Bruce Finley, who many of you know, is um, currently undergoing surgery, a heart bypass surgery. And he um, had a heart attack this past Thursday. And um, they were hopeful about this surgery and just asked for this community to join them in prayers. And so for Bruce and for his doctors, for Linda and for Brenna and Morgan, for all those who love Bruce, for his 10th uh, graders who were just confirmed this past Sunday, for all the ways that his um, love has been made known in this community, we ask now that God's love is made known to him and that he is protected and healed. God, in your mercy. All right. Prayer for you, Jason McGrew King, um, uh, and your call in this world on this day of your, your birthday. Um, and uh, grateful for the ways that you live out your call in this community and the world and God's continued blessings on you. God, in your mercy. And Nick, another, another birthday for nephew Wilder, who is two. For the gift of family, for the gift of... Um, two-year-olds, how they are living out their call in the world by being two and fully themselves and for families that support them um, and are changed by, by these young ones. And especially for Wilder today, Nick, God in your mercy. Jeannie, we're praying for Aunt Lucy, uh, Ben's sister who is in the hospital with pneumonia. Um, God, protect Lucy and send her the care that she needs. Comfort her. Um, relieve her pain um, and calm her. Let her know that you are near holding her in your, in your love. God, in your mercy. Laura, we're praying for um, Wade's grandmother, Ione, who tested positive for COVID yesterday and was admitted to the hospital. Certainly serious and scary for you, um, Harding family. And so, um, for Ione and uh, for the gift that she is in this world 
And uh, for the days ahead, God, we ask that you give her strength, that you give her care, and that you bring her healing. God, in your mercy. Terry, expanding that prayer, prayers to those with COVID-19, and as the days go on, the amount of people that we know, the, amount, the, the, the closer to our lives that, that this disease gets, and um, for all those who are living with COVID, who have um, survived COVID, for all those who have died from COVID or grieving someone who has, um, God, we, we know that your spirit is somewhere in here, and we ask that you would um, reveal to us um, where you are and send your uh, comfort and healing to this world. God, in your mercy. Laura, um, uh, pr a prayer of thanks for Georgie, your newborn, um, doing well in that she stays healthy and for the gift of new life for parents and for uh, brothers for Georgie um, and for aunts and uncles and grandparents as well. Um, and that and how they receive new life from Georgie. God in your mercy. Yes, Ruth, um, yes, for Aunt Lucy. Um, and um, in addition that uh, this is her birthday, 80, number 84. And so we're praying for your family, Ruth. God in your mercy. Rita, we join you in this, this prayer that we've been praying since uh, really January uh, for all those hurt by COVID. And we know that it's not just health, it's also uh, loss of uh, loved ones, isolation, loss of jobs, loss of home, loss of mental health, loss in faith and democracy. Just many, many things that we are uh, grieving right now. And in the midst of all this unknown, in the midst of all of this uncertainty and fear, we ask that God would anchor us and give us courage and wisdom for the road ahead. God, in your mercy. Terry, prayers of uh, celebration for your great nephew, Weston, who's turning two tomorrow. May you grow to know and love God in his life. Indeed, that is our prayer for everyone not only that they know and love God, but know how much they are loved by God. And for you, as a great aunt, um, vocation, all, all of these uh, family members who are sent uh, to shape us, and we know that, um, we know that uh, you are doing that, Terry. God, in your mercy. Yes, Linda, I'm going to uh, echo your prayer. Um, we're great. This prayer of gratitude for the blessings of this community. And it seems like in times of trial and struggle, you understand just what a blessing community can be, what a phone call can do, what a kind word can do, uh, what someone who says they're praying for you can do. And Linda, we hope and trust that you are feeling that. God, in your mercy. Tony, yes, praying that the country can come together as one again and all be united, especially in times like these. We know that things are just really, really difficult right now and that um, it, it, we, we might love someone very much and yet it can be difficult to talk to them sometimes. And we know that, um, it, that that's sad, that's sad. Um, and it's difficult um, and we don't know where to start. And... Um, when we're afraid, we ask that God give this gift of unity. We cannot manufacture it on our own. We need God to show us the way. So God in your mercy. Lisa, happy birthday to Bailey today, five years old. Um, Bubba, called by your family. We love you so much. And God loves you too, Bailey. And for Rebergs, for the ways that you are family together and that you are family in this wider community, part of this church family as well. Blessings on your call. God in your mercy. Christy prays for the Darvel family mourning the loss of their precious daughter and sister Megan to suicide. Suicide is a reality that we talk about. Um, and we know that in these times uh, that are difficult, if you were already carrying a lot, it just gets that much harder. And sometimes pain 
um, is too much to manage. And so we, we pray that God might show us a way um, to be community with one another, um, to be able to talk about things that are hard to talk about. Um, but mainly we are praying for those who love Megan and for the ways her life mattered in this world for this knowledge that God loved her and loves her and that love is stronger than death, for this promise that nothing will ever separate us from God. And so nothing will ever separate us from one another. God, in your mercy. Prayers for Asher the cat having surgery on Thursday and for health for all of our family, including the furry members as well. Prayers for a successful surgery for Asher. God, in your mercy. And Ron, strength, patience, peace, and healing for Cousin Jim's wife, Joanne, now home facing long road to recovery from heart surgery. We know that um, a surgery can be successful, right? But healing is a longer process. And we pray that Joanne gets what she needs patience and endurance and persistence and community that supports her and holds her when the road is just too much. God, in your mercy. We close our prayers um, with the prayer of good courage, and we can say it together. Oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown, give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. When your pastor's phone dies during online worship, TJ comes with a portable battery pack. Thanks for that, TJ. Um, you know what? We had um, three amazing weeks of outdoor worship in September. Um, we thought maybe one or two, and we got three. And for all the sweatshirts and bundling up of your faces and your bodies to be here, and for you online who have been faithful and diligent, I'm just grateful um, this feels really good, but as we look ahead and see highs in the 40s, um, to sustain this is probably not possible. So as I said in that email on Thursday, um, the word right now is not yet. Not yet to get back in person in the building for a lot of reasons. And um, we have an amazing group of leaders in public health and legal invested in the mission and mission of on all of it looking at everything we know right now with the approval of the council. So hang on, as soon as we can get there, we will get there and we will communicate. But for the time being, starting next Sunday, we're back to online exclusively. We do have a phone in option. And this means that we all have to show up um, in new and different ways. So be a Ruth, notice who the Ruths are in your lives, name what you need, and then um, we're going to do this, and we're going to make it. Um, so that's, that's where we are. Uh, we made the tough decision not to open the building up to small groups. Um, our main focus is to keep the building healthy and safe. The Child Learning Center and the community meal have gone uninterrupted since March. And I think that has been in the diligence of how we use our building um, for those two mission and ministries. If you're a small group, You've been doing a great job creatively of meeting. If you have questions, reach out to staff and we will guide you along the way. And as always, we're gonna keep talking about it, right? All these stories from scriptures are around space for community. What does God have to say about community? And God will continue to show up. Our mission statement is finding our place in God's unfolding story. And we will continue to do that in every way, shape and form. But hear this again, you matter. You matter in this world and we matter to each other and we need each other so much along the way. So lots of things starting again for the fall to bring your attention to in the email and online. Um, I do wanna put in a plug for faith formation. Um, I do not know of a church that has as strong of a both staff and a lay team around faith formation 
Rich Youth and Families, Beth McGrew King, Erica with Kids and Families, Pastor Joel, and all the small group leaders from littles all the way up through high school. They are creative and innovatively working. We waited a little bit and we're starting in October because there's just been so much turbulence with school starting. If you haven't registered, can you do that to let us know because all these groups are forming and it makes a difference when you show up for someone else. So if you have questions about that, ask the team. And then um, our community meal continues to do wonders. That garden behind you, they're sharing fresh produce each and every week. But we have room for volunteers to help serving in the meal. There was up to a two month wait for a while and now Deb McDonald says there's need. So please go to the website if you feel a call. We continue to do that as a to-go model and we'll continue to do that in the months ahead. Um, so please know that there's a place for you there as well. And then um, innovatively, we're having a new member class. We welcome some new members this last spring and we will do so again via Zoom next week. So if that fits you or you know of someone, even for them to come and hear a little bit more about who we are at Mount Olivet, please do so. We would love to have you be a part of that. So again, thank you. Thank you to our amazing technicians and musicians for Angela for making all of this happen. It's just been such, such a gift. Um, I forgot my bulletin for the blessing. Um, so I'm gonna just do one that, oh, you have one. Thank you. All right, be blessed. Go forth into the world in justice. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor everyone. May God's source, word, and spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Made up their minds and they started packing. They left before the sun came up that day. Summer, they'll never get cold, they'll never be home.